Oh, hello. Welcome to the art gallery here at Chateau Rob. As you can see, this fine work behind me was painted by my neighbor, Rose Bond. And since one of you viewers kindly asked about it, I thought I'd try to tell you a little bit about it. Or at least just show it. Yeah, Rose, my neighbor Rose, who is psychic, um, painted this. I don't know when she painted it, but it's, it's from within her house. And as you can see, there is a uh, like a liqueur bottle and then a book and a glass and a magnifying glass and, and a table in a corner. And um, actually what Rose told me about the painting is that she initially gifted it to another local um, performer who I know, um, who's a bit of an acquaintance. And I don't think he really, um, knowing this person, um, I don't think, and also what she told me about it, I don't think he really appreciated it the way I have. So he ended up giving it back to her when he moved, which I think giving back the gift of a painting is not maybe the best thing you could do. <laughs> uh, I don't think that I would do that under almost any circumstances ever, unless I did not like the person <laughs> who gifted me the painting. <laughs> but why would they gift it in the first place? So um, consequently, Rose had this in her home. And then when I went to see her, um, right around the beginning of 2021, just before I started doing videos on YouTube, um, she, um, we had a conversation and some of her paintings were around and I was admiring them. And she said, would you like this one? And I said, I definitely would. And it will match my apartment. So it does. I mean, I'm not going to show you the whole apartment right now, but obviously it matches the wall very well. And it matches, uh, well, it kind of matches the lamp and it matches this other, um, print of a painting I have over here of a woman with like the, I think that's the lotus flower, right? She appears to be Tibetan. Um, I don't know the origin of that painting beyond that. It, it isn't an original, it's a print. But this is, of course, this is an original by Rose. And she has other paintings too. I don't know if she sells them. Um, but if anybody's really interested, I can I can find out if she does. So um, that's for you, uh, Faye, for asking about the painting. And um, okay, so pardon me, I'm going to shift here. Let's try to set up. Oh, so sorry. Um, so um, I wanted to come back on and try to do a quick one because I don't have a lot of battery life on my phone. Wow, that's an interesting angle. It's like very... Um, uh, I wanted to do a quick one to finish up about the dreams from the other day because they were pretty quirky. And... Uh, oh, damn it. I'm so sorry. This is not a professional operation, really, and especially when you move the camera. So, um, oh yeah, look at the lens. So, um, part two of my dreams from the other night was um, the cosmic part. Um, after I had the dream um, that I described about the punk rock stuff, um, I had a dream that it kind of transitioned right from the punk rock dream. Um, I had a dream. It seemed like it was this group of people that were in the punk rock dream, like the the, the punks themselves, maybe. I'm going to sit back a little. Pardon me. It was the punk rock kids themselves. And basically, for reasons unknown, unexplained, but again, welcome to the logic of my... <sighs> welcome to the logic of my dreams. I'm so sorry. I just lost like five sub subscribers right there. Um so it was the group of punk rock kids and um as per the illogical logic of dreams um we decided to visit um these floating neighborhoods in the sky um what they were were like um well there were a lot of things going on i was aware because this was kind of an alternate reality and in the first place, I was aware that um, there were a lot of um, planetary bodies in the sky. There were way more planets visible in the sky, and they were far larger than uh, like looking at stars the way we do here. We're looking at planets, and they look like stars from where we are. These were actually like you could you could see them. You could see the planets in the sky almost like they were moon-sized, 
and there were at least three or four or five, and they were all closely together in the sky. And um, and there was a lot of like sort of like cosmic phenomena, you know, almost like um, nebulas floating around. And as is often the case in my space dreams, my cosmic dreams, it's 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 mysterious outer space. And we decided, like I said, the group of us to go up in these personalized hot air balloons to visit um, these like small cities that floated uh, in air. They basically existed on like um, like a rock bed. They were basically floating. It was it was like looking up at. Um, like floating upside down mountains, you know, you could see the underside of all the rock, like as if it, as if a city had been lifted out of the earth and all of the uh, soil and the bedrock below had come with it and it was all jagged beneath. And then the city existed on top, but they floated in the clouds. And there were apparently many of these floating um, neighborhoods in the sky, but they were essentially the slums. So we had already in the in the punk rock dream that I related this afternoon, it was already kind of futuristic and quasi slummy, but very colorful and very alive. But these places were like more, a little more rundown and a little more depressive. So when we got up to one, they were mostly uninhabited. Um, there really weren't many people around other than more like kind of like homeless people and men, people with mental illnesses. But as I said, the way that we got up there to them was via personal hot air balloons. Um, it's hard to recall. Like it was basically like sitting in a box or a pod. It was like, like basically enough room for one person, like a bucket, like a bucket. For one person, it didn't look like a hot air balloon at all. It wasn't elaborate. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't um, like a basket with with the with the balloons attached. Literally, you got your bucket and you got this little like you got the not you got the nozzle end of the balloon, and then basically you got your own little balloon and it just attached. And but that was enough to elevate you not only above the ground but into the sky through the clouds. We did travel through clouds to get to one of these floating neighborhoods in the sky. But what was really interesting was on our way to the floating neighborhoods in the sky, the abandoned slums that had floated up somehow unexplained. Um, as we were rising up through the atmosphere, I looked off in the distance again to my right. And uh, like I said, that's when I could see that there were all these planets in the sky um, pretty pretty close to Earth. Well, actually, I can't say that it was Earth, but maybe it, it probably was, but it was like a different version. Uh, but the planets were impossibly close. And then, this is the really weird part that I didn't really think about more until later. There was definitely, there was some kind of, to be honest with you, there was some kind of conflict going on like over, over a hill and water. And what it looked like, I can't tell you for sure, but it looked like alien ships, like alien spaceships interacting with and um, basically... Um, incapacitating um, like old school uh, warships, modern warships, you know, and the warships, you know, like a Navy, like, like in the American Navy or the Russian Navy and the, and, and the Navy ships were in a circle and the alien ships were above them and the alien ships were firing down beams of, light or laser at these ships in the circle and they were it seemed to me that they were the alien ships were so much more te technologically advanced that they were bound to dominate and defeat 
these ships. And then, so when I woke up later, I thought, oh my gosh, was that like, was that something connected to the war in Ukraine somehow? Like almost like a, like a signal of divine intervention over there, you know, like, could it be, is it possible that there has been, um, some, not just, um, American and Western and NATO assistance to Ukraine, but even like unannounced, unknown um, ET <laughs> intervention assistance to neutralize Russian, um, you know, warships? I can't answer that question. It seems a little far-fetched to me, but yet when I think about what was what I literally saw in the dream, that's what I saw in the dream. Now, sometimes a dream is just a dream, really. Uh, I don't feel that every one of my dreams is um, symbolic of some deeper thing or or always predictive of anything. I, I do think that sometimes dreams are just funny and weird, but um, yet other times I feel like, yeah, this, this does seem to represent something. Certainly the dreams I had about the beginnings and endings of major cycles, like um, major... Um, spiritual cycles on earth that I had throughout 2021 that are chronicled in all the videos from, from last year that, that, um, I did after I finished reading my first book, those when they were starting together seemed to all suggest together that like we are at the end of this big cycle and the beginning of the next big cycle on this planet. Um, so as we were rising through the atmosphere in our personalized hot air balloons, Somehow we could breathe in the upper atmosphere, which wouldn't really be true. Uh, we observed this conflict going off in the distance. And essentially it was like there was nothing that we could do. There was no way for us to be a part of it, even if we wanted to be. It was beyond our um, techno technological um, capabilities to even get involved. And there was really nothing to be done. It, like what was going on over there, we couldn't we couldn't affect it. And so we were like, well, I guess that's just going to happen. So off we went and up we traveled, then through the clouds. And then we reached this floating city neighborhood. And uh, we walked around its slums. And we um, sort of lamented what had, what had happened to this place that it had become so desolate and so destroyed and essentially abandoned, so abandoned that it somehow, you know, rose away from earth. Like uh, that part, I don't understand. Maybe if anyone's got an insight as to what that might symbolize, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear it, but I don't have a theory on it. And that's really it. So Perhaps I've made this a little, maybe the ending here is a little anticlimactic. I wish I could describe it for you more as I experienced it because that feeling of going up through the clouds, and it was a fast journey, like from the ground up through the clouds right up to this floating city block. Um, it really didn't take long at all. And that, and I remember feeling how I was like so surprised. And then also seeing that little conflict between the alien ships and the, and the warships in the water at a distance in the circle. And then also noting the planets poking through like around these clouds and being like, it was like being aware that we were part of a, of a larger thing too, like a larger cosmos, if you will, too. So it had that aspect of wonder that I have experienced many times in my dreams and which, um, always um i won't say it always surprises me but it's just the the it, it's these these scapes that i see are often so beautiful and so unusual and so um the phenomena in the sky the colors and the whole scene are so um beautiful and otherworldly that i get excited about i get excited and frightened by the idea that there may be places out other places out there in the universe that look like this that that perhaps in astral form we can visit them in dreams or certainly maybe when we pass back to spirit and we are simply energy we can be wherever we want to be in the universe and we can see marvels 
that we don't see from Earth, as beautiful as it is here and as beautiful as the skies can be from Earth. Um, there are probably other vistas to see that are just as marvelous or um, marvelous in a completely different way. So that's really all uh, I would say about that. So I just wanted to throw the part two in there. Um, again, not entirely sure how part two relates to part one, except that there was continuity. Um, and that's what I got. So I hope that was uh, at least a little bit entertaining. Sorry about all the technical and all that, but I wanted to show the painting, make sure I did, because I promised I would. So uh, again, hope you have a great week. Um, see you next time. Uh, something i dream about something weird <laughs> uh until then be well and take care and uh, have a great week bye